Hey, in this video, I will be showcasing the scan port to USB adapter. This adapter is based on a project by Necrowave and is essentially the same, except that instead of using a PCB, I used some protoboard and made the electrical connections myself. I decided I wanted to make such an adapter to be able to use an older game port joystick I had laying around the house. My initial idea was to buy an adapter, but the commercially available options were all rather expensive or took a long time to get delivered. Furthermore, this DIY option supports more joysticks than the commercial options. Hence, I decided to scavenge my junk motherboard and parts bin to find the parts and make my own. Searching around the internet led me to the aforementioned project, of which you can find links in the description. But why do we need such an adapter in the first place? The reason is because the communication protocols and the physical pins are different between a game port device and a USB device. Necrowave's original video contains an excellent explanation of the game port pins, but since we need some context, I will include a brief overview of the pins here. If you want a more detailed explanation of the pins, you can check out his original video. The following diagram shows the pins of the game port. It is a 15 pin socket which takes both analog and digital signals from the joystick. Pins 1, 8, and 9 are for 5 volts or VCC. Pins 4 and 5 are for ground. Pins 2, 7, 10, and 14 are for the buttons. These are digital pins. Pins 3, 6, 11, and 13 are for the axes. And pins 12 and 15 are for MIDI. These were used for audio devices. The buttons are digital signals, which means they can only be on or off. Off being 0 volts and on being 5 volts. While the axes of the joystick are analog signals. The value goes from 0 to 5 volts. And the center point is usually something close to 2.5 volts. If I tilt the joystick to the left a little, the value might be something like 1 volt. So between 0 volts and the middle point, which is 2.5 volts. Same goes for the other side. If I do a hard right, then the value will be 5 volts. But if I do a lighter right, the value will be something between 2.5 and 5 volts. These ports were usually found on PCs from the 80s and 90s, first in their own dedicated sound cards and then integrated into the PC's sound card. On this particular PC, you can see this yellow one over here, that is the game port. It even has the little joystick icon on it. Necrowave's project can be found on GitHub. The repository contains the PCB files, electrical schematics, and the firmware for the Arduino, which is what translates the game port signals to USB. So, why is my version of this adapter special if I essentially just followed the instructions on how to build it from someone else's project? First of all, I'd like to appreciate that there are such people out there that would share their project and make it open source for others to build. This is truly amazing, since of course, these things take time, knowledge, and experience. Furthermore, Necrowave has not yet been able to make the adapter commercially available, due to several reasons better explained by him in his original video. So the DIY option is the only way you currently have of getting one of these adapters. Lastly, while PCB prototype manufacturers have now become cheap and offer great quality for tinkerers, the time delays and shipping expenses are hard to justify for a small project. The boards themselves can be purchased for 2 euro, but the cheapest shipping option was around 10, and it took more than two weeks to arrive. That's not even talking about the more expensive shipping options, which can cost around 40 euro. Of course, if you're making many of these, then the cost starts to make sense. For me, it was hard to justify the monetary and time cost to build this adapter. So I simply spent a free afternoon soldering the connections on the board myself using parts that I already had available to get the same result. I'm not saying everyone should do the same, since using a PCB saves you in building and potentially debugging time, and it is easier to solder everything to a pre-made PCB. But I wanted to show that it can be done. If you want to see how I built it and the details of the process, there's a post on my website, which you can check out if you're interested. In conclusion, if you want to build this adapter, there is the option of doing it yourself, without a PCB. The end result works perfectly, as can be seen from this video. It does have its drawbacks, 
like the fact that it requires more work and experience to put together, and there are bare connections on the board, which are avoided on a PCB due to a PCB having solder mask. This can be solved by being mindful of the placement of the adapter, using some standoffs, or even 3D printing a bottom plate to avoid it touching any metal and shorting out. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing and leaving a like if you enjoyed this video. Bye for now.